Where the breathing is easy, the living is good Out in the great outdoors Larry Smith Outdoors is brought to you by Warrior Boats, Vortex, Tub O'Towels, Leroy's Meats, Bartline Barrels, Magic Products, Power Sports Company, Mike's Country Meats, Baronet Blinds, Drexel Building Supply, Eskimo and the MRD Group. everybody welcome back to this week's show i will tell you what like i do each and every week thanks for joining us for sure hey we are up on the wisconsin river today and with our good friend lance the lightning the one and only and we are doing a little scouting we have a couple days before uh, we actually get into our heavy duty guiding uh, up on the pestergo in the okano area so what we did is we wanted to come up to here on the Wisconsin and see if we can get on some fish. And if we do get on them, tomorrow we are going to bring some guests up here uh, from the show and do a little bit more fishing. So hang on to your honeys. Let's see what's happening. Hey, I'll tell you, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, the water levels are down, but there is a halfway decent current this morning. So hopefully these fish are sucking up out of the lake and into the river. The timing should be perfect. We do need a little bit more moisture. We need some warm weather or some rain to get this water up and get it flowing in. And that's not just up on the Wisconsin River, but definitely that's the key to fishing these rivers. The more draw you have going down into the lakes to bring them fish up is definitely the key. So hang on your honeys, let's see what happens this morning. Oh, oh, it's a mink. Hey, buddy, how you doing? There you go, Lance. Just, just got a stick, Larry. Oh, oh no. Oh. Bottomed up. Oh. oh. Catch and release. Hey, I'll tell you what. Basically, just kept going until we started marking some good pods of fish. And, you know, that's the difference now with electronics. Looks like a good one. Might be, illegal. Might be legal. Up here, it's a 15 to 20 inch size limit or one over 28 inches. Okay, 15 and a quarter. 15 and, and a quarter. quarter. Nice job, Lance. Lance is on the board. Pretty good food in the system for a little guy. He's yeah, got a nice he's a belly on him. Yeah, monkey. Lance, that looks like a better fish. You need a net? No, we're good. You're killing me, Lance. What are you doing? Let's tell everybody what you're doing. Are you vertical? Yeah, I'm vertical. See, I'm dragging more. Oh, that's a nicer fish. Woo! Gotta like that one. Holy man. Yeah, I, you switch to the plastics. I'm using live bait and... We'll mix it up a little bit, see if it gets some better. Well, you catch I know if I get I'm too far ahead, bait. you're going to be the live bait. I'm going to live bait pretty soon here. I'm going to live bait. Holy man, Lance. You you got her going. The minnows this morning, Larry. Yeah, oh, they want them minnows. That one might not make this it, but still. This one's a little short, but. But still, people always ask, does color make a difference? And typically, orange up here is one of my favorite colors. But you got, what, chartreuse on there? Yeah, chartreuse, yellow and green. Yep. Well. It's working pretty so good. Far, they're liking it. Yeah, they are. That one's a little short. I tell you what, it's so important nowadays to basically to have your electronics dialed in. Now, as you can see here, here's a bunch of trees right here. You can see this tree comes up quite a bit. That's the shadow of it. Now, look up here. Now, this is a fish right here. These are probably both walleyes right here. Is another one right here. But basically, just utilizing your electronics. And the cool part is, if you want to kind of zoom it in, like. I'm going to zoom into this fish right here so you can kind of tell what kind of fish it is. 
Okay, now you can see it. This is probably a walleye right here because it's more streamlined right here. But again, just kind of going along, and that's what Lance and I were doing. You know, basically, you know, spent a, about half hour, 45 minutes before we even really stopped and started fishing. Um, there's just no reason anymore, you know, really to stop and fish when you're not seeing anything. With the exception, like this is all sand bottom here. You can see on the shoreline how everything's sand here. So it's a harder bottom there, so it's a lot easier to pick these fish out. Now, if it was super rocky here or real silty where these fish could lay down in it, it's a little bit harder to see them. But and when you start thinking about the contour of this body of water here, these fish are simple to, to find as far as trying to find them. But again, you know, knowing that there's fish there it gives you the confidence to start trying different things to get them to react to it. But again, utilizing your electronics is, is everything nowadays. It's, you know, I've been fishing a long time and I used to think, you know, 20 years ago, electronics are really good. There's no comparison. I mean, it's just that they just keep getting better and better. And uh, again, it's a learning curve, you know, especially for guys like me that are a little bit older, not real old, but a little bit older, you know, you just got to use them more, fish smarter for sure. Oh, here we go. What's up, Larry? Finally, Lance. Had to go to the same colors you did that you that you're working and I went with the super braid just to get a little different pop out of it. Oh, there you go. That's a good fish right there. Them in there. That's a nice one. Yep, that's a nice one. That one you're definitely not going to have to measure. You know, that's a big thing too, Lance, is that, you know, this time of year, having that high vis line really helps because I saw as I was, as I was dropping it, I saw that line jump right off the bat right yeah. there before I could even feel it and set the hook on it. Now that's a great fish right there. You know, that's probably in that, that 17 and a half, 18 inch range right there. And again, when you're fishing up on the peat and well here, any part of this, most of these parts of the Wisconsin River, you know, that size limit is 15 to 20 or one fish over 28. But that's a, that's a good solid fish. Honestly, that's the first bite that I've had. And I was using plastic, some different colors, uh, just trying to mix things up a little bit. But Lance had three on me right off the bat like that. So I just switched over and uh, right away, boom, bingo, swing ding. And like you say, with that high visibility line there, you know, later in the year we're dragging, it's not as critical, but right now when, when, when you're vertical jigging, when them fish aren't chasing that bait, and you gotta present that bait right up and down in front of yep. them, you need to see that slack in the line. And with the high visibility, all, all companies are making the high visibility right. now, but you're catching it that. Certainly, certainly helps on the fishing. Yeah, more times than not, it's amazing how if you just let that line fall, and you're not falling down or watching how that fish can suck that jig in and spit it up before you even come back up. So it's always good to make sure that you try to keep that line taunt as it's going down. <clears throat> and we got a little bit of wind to deal with today too, so it makes it a little bit tougher. So definitely watching that line is, is crucial. Feels good. Yep, here we go, yep. You just had a dandy on Lance. This is not too bad of a fish right here. Yep, I'm loving that. I'll tell you what, definitely as it's warming up, you know, it's probably, I don't know, about 9, 30, 10 right now. Uh, they're definitely getting more aggressive. I just had one on the plastic too, and uh, you just lost a dandy. That rod was bent right over. And a lot of times you're going to see that is your more active fish are going to be a little bit later in the morning, especially as it warms up a little bit. And, you know, it got pretty cold again last night. We're definitely having a super late spring, which, you know, for the most part, we knew we were going to pay for it. We had such a mild winter, and uh, now it's just last and holding on forever here. But I'm going to bump this one on the bump board and see where it goes and uh, get back down there. Hey, I'll tell you what, Lance. Wow, things really are going good now. Whew, I got mine on the old plastic on the ring. Where do you got, Lance? Oh, there you go. Hang on. There Whoa, we are. nice deal. Boy, I'll tell you something, Lance. I mean, again, you know, things change. You know, I started out this morning with plastics and I could not get bit, which is unusual. And uh, so I went back to, obviously, you were catching them on minnows pretty good. So I went to a minnow there and uh, 
Second mm -hmm. one you second hit you had on them plastics. You've yeah, only been fishing them for about two or five minutes. And again, always suggesting you want to bump these two up and see yep. if they make see it. What we got. All right, I'm going back to fishing. The rod on that plastic I'm using, right. but it feels like good fish. Dude. That's, good That's another good one right there. You know, again. The big thing always is that when you're marking these fish, like I was talking about before, there you go, Lance, it's like they're doubled up right there. When you're marking these fish, it's hard not to sit here and keep trying different things to get them to go, you know? So that's, that's the biggest thing right there. Hey, when you're marking these fish, you know, the biggest thing is that it gives you the confidence that the fish are down there. So you're going to keep changing your techniques. You know, it's a different story where years ago where you weren't 100% sure they were walleyes. You weren't sure they were down there. But nowadays, again, when it comes to electronics, you know, it's amazing the difference it makes, especially once you have confidence in them. And that's the biggest thing right there. But before, you know, like I was saying too, you know, I started the morning off using plastics and I couldn't get bit at all. Lance had three in a row. So I switched over to minnows and uh, I decided the last two passes to go back to plastics and now they're just inhaling that. There's another nice fish, Lance. You want to bump nice them up? Probably one's a little 70. small. Okay. Right here over here, you can see our deep hole is right over this way. I'm just running on the edge. These fish are right off to our left, right in the beginning of that deep hole over there. And that's a big thing too, is that I think a mistake that a lot of people make, even in a river, is that I try not to drive over them fish. And you know, it's just one of them kind of things where it does, after a while, it does definitely does spook them. So. Spook them fish. We see them up in the bay, up in the sand flats oh. up there, seven, eight feet of water. It's crazy how that. bite and people just turn around and go right back over where, they're fi where you're fishing. Don't and, do it. It lasts for about 20 minutes and them fish are scattered, they're gone. They're gone. Feels pretty darn good, Lance. I don't know what it is, but it feels good. It's a nice one. Nice job. Huge, huge, huge walleyes in here. Definitely a good fish. See what you got there, Lance. You got a good tussler for I'm sure. Working on her. Hopefully, I won't let you down on the net part, buddy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a ten pounder right that's there. A good one. That's a freaking tank. <laughs> that is go, absolutely. That's that that's that's absolutely a giant giant walleye. That's about ten pounds, maybe even yeah. a little bit bigger. We were working a little bit deeper water. And we were seeing all these fish on our live scope in the side of imaging. So we decided to cut down the other side of the river channel up on that break right there. And them fish are just stacked up there. There is a lot of big fish in here. You know, I mean, this slot has been on here for quite a few years. And I'm a firm believer in slot limits for sure. I mean, it really makes a big difference when you can, can't keep them big fish. Hold that baby oh, up. They are fun to catch, Larry. Yeah, that. That is absolutely a tank right there, Lance. Good job on yeah, that one. That was. We'll be catching a lot of these real soon. Be a walleye at right? First. No, that's what I said. There's a lot of big walleyes in this system here, which is it's a cool body of water. Been fishing it probably for, geez, I hate to even say this, but probably going on almost 40 years now. Yeah, that's so a beautiful. That's fish. a beaut right there, man. Tank hole. A real big one, Lance. Not like that one you just caught, but still, still. No, I'll I'll flip them, man. We got. I mean, we're doing pretty darn good today, I'll tell you that much. Whoa, that is a nice fish. Man, oh man. And you just absolutely inhaled that plastic. Now, you know, before I was more vertical and popping it a little bit, but we're kind of, you know, in, we're kind of in a little bit of a lull. I mean, I shouldn't say that you just caught a 10 pounder, but we're not getting the bites. We're not getting the numbers that we were getting, you know, an hour ago. So what I did is I just kind of started sliding that plastic and basically just kind of holding it off bottom. You know, the guys on the Mississippi do that a lot. And basically what I was doing is just be holding it off the bottom, maybe about two inches and just kind of letting it, almost like just drifting it. And you know, obviously when you start looking at a paddle tail like that, it's going back and forth still like that. But instead of lifting it and popping it, letting it fall, just kind of holding it. And that's what that fish just absolutely, just started doing it and he just absolutely cracked that. I'll tell you what, man, Another good eater, what were you really? doing now? Hey, I got to kind of laugh before I asked you what kind of minnows you're using right away this morning. You said fatheads, oh. and now you just told me a little while ago you caught all your fish on shiners. Yeah, I might have led you in the wrong direction this morning, Larry. <laughs> I see how that works, right? <laughs> but you got them on fatheads anyway, so right. what's the difference? 
and plastics. Can't give away all my secrets. Was that a good fish? It would have been a, a keeper. I guide pretty much over 300 days a year, and the people that I bring into my boat aren't just customers and friends, they're actually family. And I always try to keep these people as comfortable as I can and safe, and I cannot think of a better product than a warrior boat. Why is their customer service so good? Because they know that you're part of their family. Come join the warrior family. Hey, Shotgun in the Kitchen here, Larry Smith Outdoors. Leroy, breakfast time. I have venison maple breakfast sausage. Larry had deer made up and uh, he gave me one. He said, you gotta try this. So I'm gonna make a breakfast sandwich this morning. I'm gonna take the sausage and make a patty out of it. I got some buns. That's not everything. I got some really nice buns from Leroy Meats this morning. Make a little sandwich and watch a little TV in a bit here. This I took out two days ago and thawed it out. Just, you know, don't take it out that morning because it's not going to work that great. It's going to be too stiff. So you want to make it thin, size of your bun usually. It's all seasoned already, everybody, so all I'm doing is cooking it. Most expensive part of this meal, I guess, is the eggs right now. <laughs> when you got wild game, I found out when my kids lived at home, if you ask them to help you cook and do the stuff with the product, they're more susceptible to eat it with you, and that's huge. I mean. People say that your, people, you know, your wife or kids don't eat the food. Have them cook it, make fun out of it, man. It's uh, what life is all about. You can see, if you look at it, you can see all the stuff they added in there. See all the little chunks of, all been added into the meat for the flavoring, the maple. They got it down to science there. You can, you can smell it plain as day. All right, you guys, I got a nice little brown on the buns. Eggs on top already. And I know the cheddar is melted because I can see it coming out the side. And a deciding point right now. Maple, sugar, venison, breakfast sausage. Larry Smith Outdoors, Shotgun Chef, breakfast. Oh, we should have a little kick to her, do. Hmm. Good though. Hey, I'll tell you what, anytime that uh, I'm vertical jigging, I definitely always like to have a swivel in there because when you're constantly lifting like that and letting it back down, you're gonna get a lot of spin in your line. And what happens a lot of times, when you go to hold that jig still, right off slightly off the bottom, what it's gonna do is start spinning. So you want that jig to sit perfect in the current like that. So it, it always pays to have a good swivel in there and what I'm doing is I'm going from a 410 basically super braid to an eight pound mono. And I'm using the eight pound mono because you know what, when I do get snagged up, I don't want that fire line or my super braid to break off and have to retie the whole thing. So it's always better to go a little bit lighter with your mono. So that's the weakest point. Always use a really good swivel too. I don't buy the cheap ones. I spend a little bit. And what I do use when I'm tying my swivel, I always use a Palomar knot. It's the best knot anytime you're using super braids, pretty much anytime I'm using mono too or a fluorocarbon. It's real easy to tie. I'll show you guys right down below how we tie this. And a lot of times when I go to tie, I'll use the Palomar knot when I go to tie from my my super braid to my swivel and then when I go to tie from my swivel to the mono or the fluorocarbon I'll usually tie a fisherman's knot again a little bit weaker knot because I definitely want that to break I don't want that swivel to break off of my super braid Hey, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey, I'll tell you what, you know what? A lot of times what I do when I'm slipping the current like this and I have a steady wind is basically what I'll do is I'll set my trolling motor on like 
Right now I have it set at one and a half and I got it set on constant. So I'm not always on the throttle, off the throttle, on the power, off the power. And basically it's, I'm slipping the current just absolutely perfect. Again, it's one of them kind of things where I can basically just kind of keep my feet off it. The boat is slipping perfect. I've got the wind actually pushing us down river, but I don't want it to go too fast. So what I do is I just kind of control the petroleum motor and I set it at a constant speed. And you'll, you'll find that most of the time it's a lot easier to slip the current versus again, jumping on the power and getting off the power, jumping on the power, getting off of it. Hey, this week's tip of the week, again, brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey, I tell you, it's pretty rare that Lance and I get to spend much time in the boat together. You know what, we're on the ice almost every day, but you know what, in the boat is totally different story. We had a lot of fun today up on the Wisconsin River. It brought back a lot of memories. I used to fish this body of water a lot. It used to be one of my main places to guide, but now we kind of shifted and fish a lot more in the spring up on the Bay of Green Bay. But wow, when you see the size of that walleye that Lance caught, the Bay of Green Bay is not the only place to catch big fish. You know what, that slot up there has been working really well. Hey everybody, you know what, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the show this week. And we wanna give special thanks to all of our military men and women for the great service that they have given us and continued to give us, along with all of our firefighters and paramedics and all of our law enforcement agents for the great service they also give us. Hey, it is a great day to be alive, and the best part is we're going to see you guys and gals again next week, and thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, everybody. If you're like me and you always like to save a few bucks, make sure you guys check out all the great blinds that Baronet has on clearance sale, and all you have to do is go to baronetblinds.com. There's over a dozen different blinds and their famous 360 chair. And if you want to save even more money, use Stinker20 for a promo code and you guys will save a bundle. One, two, one, two, got it for you. Hey everybody, if you want to save even more money, use promo code, code, uh, I had it. it, just doesn't want to come out, the promo code, right, right, for a promo code and you guys can get, and you guys can get in on it. Poopy, poopy papa. I should have a rack with the old clinch. <laughs> oh, that clinch is something. God, it's just.